Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. Today we're discussing the Rolex Oyster Perpetual Yacht Master 2 in platinum and white gold. This is reference 116689. You can see and you can purchase this programmable regatta timer chronograph on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos and please click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen at any time during this video to see our full listing for this extraordinary Rolex complication with accessories included in the sale high resolution images for your desktop and naturally complete pricing details in the upper right hand corner click to see now this watch on my wrist is a mammoth in white gold and platinum 44 millimeters across the round of the case absent guards crown or chronograph pushers this is one of the largest contemporary Rolex watches now it's 14 millimeters thick which isn't as thick as you would expect given the footprint of the case, but it is broad across the wrist. From lug to lug, the watch measures 50 millimeters, but from solid end length to solid end length, that is the actual outermost points of the watch across the wrist, get ready, it is 57.5 millimeters. So this is a true titanic reference and a true sea monster at the same time. You didn't know I filmed monster movies, but in fact I do, and this watch is proof of that. On the wrist, the feeling of heft is simply unbelievable. The entirety of the bezel is platinum. The entirety of the case, bracelet, case back, and clasp is white gold. And you can see it is a beautifully finished white gold. This watch makes the most of differential finish and eschews the two-tone seen on other examples of the Yachtmaster family in favor of a simple contrast of satin and polished finish along the oyster-style bracelet. Now it's beautifully made. In contemporary Rolex fashion, all solid links, beautifully polished inside and out, closes with a reassuring snip and snick. And it opens to expose Rolex's proprietary easy link micro adjust. Take in or take out five millimeters per your level of activity, hot or cold. Now, the watch itself is one of the most complicated contemporary Rolex references. When it came out in 2007, I can only imagine that searches for internet tutorials probably ran rife, but today I can actually show you how to use the watch. One of the most commonly asked questions I get regarding complications is the function of the caliber 4161, 48 joule, 360 piece movement in this watch. So let's start with the basics. Unscrew the crown into its first position, let it pop out of its threaded sleeve, then take the ring command bezel, which you should know is not a conventional rotating bezel, but a functional part of the movement, and turn it 90 degrees until you hear a click. You'll hear it and you'll feel it. Now, take the chronograph reset trigger at 4 o'clock and push it in. At this point, you can set the programmable 0 to 10 minute regatta timer. Now the way that works is you simply turn the crown in its first position. When you hit 10, it retrogrades back to the beginning. So let's say we set it for 4. This is used to program the countdown to a regatta start. But the great thing is, I tend to time very short intervals of a few minutes, time between meetings, uh, time while I'm cooking, things of that nature when I'm using a chronograph. This has a huge super graphic style representation of the 10 minute countdown and in practical terms, this may be the most useful Rolex chronograph. Okay, so I've programmed my regatta timer. I turn the ring command bezel back to its stationary and standard position and you can see the Reset trigger pops out. Now I'm going to just screw the crown back down to secure it, 100 meters water resistant, and I start the chronograph. Now the chronograph starts and you can see the minute arrow will count down for each rotation of the red seconds hand, but the thing about it is that it's also a flyback. So what it will do when you press the trigger is it will reset the red seconds hand and then jump the minute indicator to the nearest minute. And that means if the seconds hand is past 30, it will jump forward. If the seconds hand has yet to reach 30, it will fly back. So it's actually a nuanced flyback. And here's the great thing. If I have an interval that I commonly time, once I've stopped and reset the chronograph, the programmable memory will remember what I programmed in until it's reset. Now the watch can be considered, in my opinion, 
a future Rolex classic and a future Rolex collectible. I'm not going to make any promises about investment value because frankly the financial gymnastics of the Rolex collector market take a few decades to completely take shape. But consider this. This was the most expensive Yachtmaster 2 you could buy at almost $50,000 when it came out in 2007. People who had to have the look of steel, a white metal, had to pay up or go without. Very few were willing to pay up. And then in 2012, a steel version priced at $18,000 came out and immediately vacuumed up all of the sales of those who preferred white metal, even the sales to those who could afford the white gold platinum combination. So this is the rarest version of the Yachtmaster II effectively the rarest version of an already rare Rolex. Moreover, the watch was very quietly revised this year, most prominently with the change of the index at 12, 6, and the addition of new hand styles, including the famed Mercedes Hour Hand. So this is effectively a first series Yachtmaster II white, gold, and platinum. We're getting a rare watch, and now we're refining it even further in terms of rarity. Beautifully finished, large and certainly not suited to every wrist. I would say the minimum wrist size for this watch is probably 15 centimeters. Believe me, you're going to feel every gram of this one on the wrist and it weighs about half a pound. Even the case back is a solid block of Rolex's own white gold, which when scratched will not show a milky yellow substrate as it is homogenous all the way through, what's called gray gold in the industry. Inside, 360 pieces, 48 joules, 70 hour power reserve, automatic winding, chronometer grade reference, 4161 programmable countdown timer. Now, of course, it also features technological refinements such as Rolex's Parachrome Bleu alloy on the Breguet overcoil hairspring and Liga cut profiled gear teeth. Very advanced stuff. So there's a lot going on in this watch in terms of material science as well as engineering innovation on the mechanical side. Free sprung, it features a full balance bridge, so it does have robust resistance to shock induced timing deviation. The Parachrome hairspring gives you resistance to magnetism and the Breguet overcoil structure of the hairspring means that regardless of what position the watch is in, it has robust resistance to gravitationally induced timing deviation. If you believe that a watch simply cannot have enough features and finery, and you want to take a long-term speculative bid for a future Rolex classic, consider this Rolex Oyster Perpetual Yacht Master II, reference 116689 in white gold and platinum on our website.